Associate Director of the Drupal Association. And I just want to thank all of you sponsors for supporting DrupalCon Amsterdam. We're really excited to uh, have this special event with you and uh, we want to make sure you get the most out of your investment, which is why we're hosting this webinar today that can give you some pro tips on how to do that. So, uh, you know, when you think about sponsoring, you want to really have um, clarity on your goals. What your, why are you sponsoring and what are you trying to get out of this investment? We find many companies are there for various reasons. One is that they're there to get uh, sales leads. Uh, another reason is for business development, maybe partnerships. Uh, a lot of people come to recruit talent and also people go to really raise their profile within the community to be seen as community leaders as well as thought leaders. And so today we'll talk about these different types of goals and ways that you can um, you know, prepare and take advantage of DrupalCon to, uh, to really um, achieve these kinds of goals. So whatever your goal is, there are five steps to success. One is you want to be proactive. Uh, definitely don't want to just sit in your booth and wait for people to come to you. There's a lot that you can do leading up to the event and during the event. We'll talk about that. And you want to make sure before you go into the event that you define your goal and the message you want everyone in your company to be um, pushing out during their time at the event. And as they say, you um, uh, really can't manage unless you measure it. And so we want to make sure that not only do you have your um, goals and your messages in place, but you have uh, a way to measure that to see if you uh, achieved what you were looking to achieve. And as you're looking to um, get that message out, uh, you want to look at all your different channels. Where can you really push that message out and uh, talk to different kinds of potential clients or partners or potential talent? And we'll go through a couple cha uh, channels that we know are available to you through DrupalCon as well as some things that you might want to consider within your own organization. And then uh, once you uh, put all these things together, of course, you're going to be very successful. And we want to make sure that you go there to celebrate your success as well. And we have a VIP happy hour. Uh, Dries will be there along with the board and association staff and all of the sponsors and supporters. It's a great networking event. It's going to be uh, Wednesday, October 1st from 1730 to 1900. Uh, it's going to be at the Rye. They have this beach that faces uh, the canal. It's really great. It's a great space. So we're going to have a lot of fun there. And uh, so I just want to make sure that gets on your calendar uh, because celebrating success and networking is certainly an important thing. Okay, so here are some things to think about, again, regardless of your goal. But you want to be known. You want to really raise your profile before, during, and after the event. So before the event, you want to uh, think about who's in your database. It might be um, your existing clients, your prospective clients, maybe some lost leads even. Um, and of course, you have your followers of your newsletter and your blogs and your social media. And so you have all these channels um, to, to leverage. And you really uh, can reach out to them before the event and let them know you're going to be at DrupalCon. You're there to support and sponsor, and you, this is a chance for you to educate them what a DrupalCon is. They may not know, they may not realize that they, maybe it's a client that just doesn't know that there's this whole community behind the, uh, behind the software that they invested in. And so you can use this opportunity to even invite them to meet you. Uh, you have sponsor tickets as part of your, um, as part of your sponsor package, or I should say you have DrupalCon tickets as part of your sponsor package. If you're not going to use them all uh, to get your employees in, feel free to raffle that out. Um, it's a great way just to get some excitement going uh, within your own um, uh, you know, client base, prospect base. And of course, you, are, you can use your channel's uh, blogs and social media. Uh, and of course, you can always just pick up the phone and call people. <laughs> Sometimes even I forget that the phone is still a viable option. Okay, so um, one thing to know if you're using social media um, to get the word out, uh, you want to use DrupalCon EUR. And of course you can um, use at Drupal if you want to expand to the greater Drupal community. 
Um, but these are just some hashtags that you should also know about. So these are some things you can do before. Uh, during the event, uh, you want to really have your brand out there. And one way I've seen companies achieve this really well and still fit into the community norms is to wear your branded company t-shirt. And it's really kind of neat to see a wave of people and then be able to see, uh, you know, your, your branded colors and logos uh, on the employees as they're walking around. And especially if they're speaking um, at a session or giving a training, of course you want them to wear that company t-shirt to get that brand out there and, and be seen as that thought leader. Um, and of course, make sure everyone has business cards, even developers. Uh, you know, you're spending a lot of money to get um, your staff there, and even if they're going for educational purposes, they're still there representing your company, and they're still going to be talking to people that perhaps you want to recruit or might be potential clients. So go ahead and make them those business cards and uh, arm everyone to be ready to network. And of course, with that whole team, uh, you want to coach them on the message that you're really trying to push out um, during that week and let them know what the goals are. And it's okay to give people goals. Hey, when, you know, if you're at a community party, if you're at the birds of a feather, you're going to be talking with people. I want you to talk to 10 people about this job opening or about, hey, talk to them about this case study that we have and let them know, like educate a couple people of uh, some of our expertise. Or maybe you want to highlight a module that you're, you have, an integration. Um, because everyone's there and talking, so you might as well make sure you get investment out of everyone that you're sending to the event. Uh, during the event, you can raise your profile digitally. Uh, some people will have a uh, communications staff member there, um, or they'll de delegate um, to someone who's maybe not a communications um, person on staff, but can act as your communicator during the event. And they will write blogs. Maybe they'll go to sessions throughout the day, and at the end of each day, they will write a blog of some really significant things that they saw and they heard, and uh, get those out every day. Or if that's too much, uh, kind of like a roundup at the end of the event. Also, you will uh, have lots of people going into sessions and going to the keynotes or going to the um, special events. And it's great to tweet what you've heard and let people follow you. Uh, you know, you could be the eyes and ears if someone's over in the case studies track. Well, maybe you're over in the developer track and people just can't get to everything. Um, so you can get a lot of followers that way. So I mentioned a lot about the sessions and the keynotes, but there's lots of other things happening where you can uh, send staff to uh, and kind of get, expand your surface area uh, throughout the event. One thing to consider the birds of a feather, and these happen during the sessions. They are not presentations. They are topics that people put up on a board, and anyone who's interested in that topic uh, goes into a room at that designated time, and you discuss. Uh, so maybe, you'll, maybe you are a company that serves the nonprofit space, and uh, you will want to um, either go ahead and, and sign up um, a BOF, to get people to talk about nonprofit issues. And you can go there and talk with people. You could be a thought leader. Um, it's a great way to uh, network and share ideas, but you just never know who you might meet in these birds of a feather uh, sessions. Um, same thing, if, uh, sometimes uh, you'll see these birds of a feather talk about, well, how do we do Drupal with uh, CRM? Or how do we, how do, we uh, do Drupal with different kinds of technologies? And so uh, if you're uh, a technology company uh, or a hosting co company, uh, feel free to put a topic that's related to you and Drupal, and, and people will come, and I think you'll see that you'll have a lot of education to share. Uh, also make sure you go to what I just called generically as special events. Um, these uh, range from Monday's community summit uh, the business summit, it's really for uh, web development agencies. Uh, there's um, all those community events at night that range from a trivia night on Thursday. Companies are hosting parties through the night. Definitely make sure your staff's going out there and wearing those branded T-shirts because they can uh, really do some networking there. You just never know who you run into. And then, of course, during the event, if you have a booth in the exhibit hall, this is a great chance to really hone that message and make sure it's crystal clear what you're trying to get across. And there's a lot of things you can do to attract people to your booth. Um, you can do raffles. 
um, you can do demos. Um, you can do fun things like come and get your picture taken with this really interesting backdrop. You know, I've seen all kinds of things that really dress up a booth and bring people in. But the most important thing is to really know what you're trying to achieve at your booth and make sure it's crystal clear to anyone who's walking by. And of course, anyone that you talk to at your booth, make sure you're collecting cards. That way you can follow up with them. And so you're, there's all these different ways to connect with people throughout the event. And hopefully you're connecting uh, business cards, taking notes on the cards about what, you know, what they're interested in. And you want to make sure that you follow up with them right away. We recommend 48 hours from the event. You know, so that week right after DrupalCon, you, you really want something out there um, to all these contacts. And uh, I don't know about you, I'm usually drop dead exhausted after DrupalCon. And so what we do is um, we set up our um, communications before DrupalCon. And that way, we just put the um, contacts right in there afterwards, and um, we send out a, a follow-up message. It's kind of automated. So if that works for you, I highly recommend it. It definitely uh, helps things along. And um, yeah, and these are just some general tips that I, I really recommend that you follow, regardless of what your goals and messages are. Um, so if you're going because you're looking uh, for sales, um, or prospective clients, I should say. We have a few um, tips uh, I wanted to share with you. One is if you go to the DrupalCon Amsterdam site, um, and I have the URL here, uh, you can you can see a list of everyone who's attending. Um, attendees opt in to share their profile, and you see them individually, uh, each individual profile, and you're able to click on that to find out who they are. Um, and also you can contact them directly. And so if you are someone, let's say, who's recruiting for talent and you're looking for a developer uh, in a certain region or with a certain specialty, you can go through the attendee profile. I will admit it's a little tedious because it's one at a time, but it's really worth the effort because you can, before the event, find people that you really want to talk to and you can contact them directly. And this is a chance to um, set up a meeting and make sure your communication really shows that you're, you know, a, a human that really wants to engage with them. So don't make it spammy. You're not selling anything. Um, it just really won't resonate with the community that way. Um, and we also uh, just want to make sure that it doesn't come off as a spam email. Um, and it's also really important that you don't use any web crawler software to grab the attendee list and get emails because, um, well, that's spam. And that is something that the community reacts to pretty badly. So, if, um, you know, we just really want to make sure you know the right way to approach attendees with your communications. If they feel that it's spammy, they will shut down. You won't get the results that you want. But we know that you are really savvy and wouldn't do that. And, um, and so when you reach out, go ahead and start setting up meetings with people before you get on site. Um, and you should have a goal of how many sales meetings um, or recruitment meetings you want to have that week. Um, think about how many good conversations you want to have out of those meetings. And also, <clears throat> think about how many business cards you want to collect. That's a good goal to have as well. Uh, so I've talked about birds of a feather already. Um, again, it's a great way to find new clients. Um, so whether you want to talk about your technology or your hosting service, or um, the success you've had as a web development agency in a special niche, feel free to attend these birds of a feathers or even make sure that when the schedule is announced uh, that it's open to put your topic on there. Uh, it's a great way to attract people in of like mind and, um, and educate them and out of there you could probably get some potential clients. And again, the social events are a great way just to um, keep meeting all the people at this, at this event. So uh, you, I'm sure, have an existing pipeline of prospective clients that you want to keep, keep them as warm leads. Um, and uh, DrupalCon is a sales tool to help you do that. So perhaps you've talked with uh, a company who said, well, I'm interested in working with you, but not until January. Or maybe you already have a client, but uh, you're working with them at a departmental basis, and you would like to expand your footprint in that client and get into more departments. Or maybe you even
can have some lost deals that you think, ah, maybe I could win them back. You know, you really want to look at that database of clients and, um, you know, DrupalCon gives you a reason to talk to them again. So you can use your newsletters or your social media, all those different channels we talked about. And some messages that you can have for them are, you know, come and see us. We have a booth. We'd love to talk to you about DrupalCon. And again, remember, these people may not know what DrupalCon really is all about and the power of it and why they should attend. So you can invite them in uh, if you have extra passes. Please use that for your clients and potential clients. Um, if they can only come for one day, we do offer a one-day pass for 99 euro. And, um, you know, maybe uh, as a cost of doing business, you would like to just buy them a pass and invite them in. It's really important that when you invite them in that you really show them that you are, uh, you know, a leader in the Drupal community, that you really know uh, the ins and outs. Um, take them to different sessions. Take them to the keynotes. Um, of course, have them to your booth. Sit down and have lunch with them. Um, and even if you're new to the community, maybe you're someone who's a, um, you know, a software company that's sponsoring or a hosting company that's sponsoring, you don't really get involved at such a deep level in the Drupal community. We can help you um, come up with um, ways to really show that kind of leadership. And, um, you know, if you have questions, just let us know. We're here to help you. Um, some other things that we've seen that really work is if you've invited someone to uh, attend DrupalCon, one of your clients and prospective clients, you can host a dinner and bring them all together. Let your prospects meet your clients. Your clients can sell you probably better than you can. So this is a great chance to really uh, make that connection happen. And, um, of course, you know, you can uh, keep sending out communications before and after this event to this audience and um, educate them and, and uh, really bring them into the fold and um, let them see that you really know Drupal. So there's a, another aspect to sales, um, which is more in line with business development, and uh, you can get a lot of leads through partnerships. So if you're a web development agency, um, you know, there's just, you might want to really look at who you can partner with. And there's uh, a couple ways you can do this. You know, there's uh, other web development agencies that are, have, you know, possibly getting a lot of leads at the time, but they don't have the bench to handle it all. And we never want leads to die in the vine. So I see a lot of companies come together and forming partnerships. For example, I've seen companies that are, let's say, they only want mid-sized clients, and they've been getting a lot of um, uh, companies or potential deals that just don't fit that profile. So they'll partner with another Drupal shop that specializes, let's say, in your small, smaller size business, and they'll pass those leads and vice versa. So you can look for those kinds of partnerships. I call it the uh, lead load balancing partnership. Um, you might even find a company um, that needs a special, well, needs a specialty. Perhaps you're a specialist in security as an example, or a specialist in custom integrations. So you might find a company that doesn't have that skill set, and you can partner there, and now they can, you can both go to market with a more robust um, services offering. So that's one kind of partnership to think about. If you are a, um, a technology company, a, you know, if you have software offering, um, or uh, you have a hosting service, you're going to want to partner as well. Uh, because if you think about it, the web development agencies are the ones that are really um, building for clients and picking technology, and uh, you want to be top of mind when they are building. So, for example, if you are a CRM, um, you uh, you know you want to talk with companies and let them know, hey, we have this integration. We are we're getting ready for Drupal 8. Uh, we have these kinds of clients. Maybe we can go to market together. Maybe. We can, um, you know, invest in uh, some joint sales. So, so that's one way to go. And if you're a hosting company, perhaps you have a dedicated managed or enterprise level um, service. You might want to reach out to um, web development agencies that have clients that need these kinds of services, and also talk about going to market together. So, what I recommend with all these different kinds of partnerships that you can have. Uh, look at the sponsor list, um, and you can look at the companies who are attending, the attending profile, 
the attendee profile will also let you know the kinds of companies that will be there that are not sponsoring. And uh, I recommend that you reach out and you set up meetings beforehand. Uh, this is a really great um, avenue for um, developing leads over time. If you're a web development agency, I want to just to point out that one great networking opportunity is the Business Summit, which is an uh, all-day event on Monday, and it's 199 euro. So uh, the purpose of this event is really to bring the um, leaders and owners of web development agencies together. It's a what we call a sacred space. Uh, everyone who's attending uh, brings up their business challenges and uh, we look at all of the common um, challenges and then we break into groups and people discuss the challenges and the solutions that they have and we have mentors in there as well to help bring this conversation along and take it to a, a level of you know where you're really reaching some solutions that you can bring home um, and I recommend this um, not only because it can really help level up some of the challenges you know really solve some of those challenges that you're having um, maybe it's growing the organization or recruiting talent, um, but you are really in a, in a position to do some great networking and, and business development there too. Um, again, the VIP happy hour that happens Wednesday, um, that is a chance to network with uh, your fellow sponsors. Also, we have a really big and growing um, supporter base for the Drupal Association. So these are also companies, uh, web development agencies, hosting companies, software companies that are supporting the Drupal Association directly. And all those funds are actually going towards Drupal.org improvements. So we invite this, all of these, um, both of these groups together. And again, it's a great time to, to network. Um, one other point um, throughout the week to, to take into consideration is that you might have people going to sessions you might have people staffing your booth, but you really want to have one person at all time designated to networking um, the hallway track is what we call it. You know, walking around the exhibit hall and talking to other sponsors, someone that's going to the birds of a feather, uh, people that are going to the parties. Um, and so just be, be mindful of who that person could be um, so you're not always uh, tied up in, in your sessions and at your booth. So that was uh, partnerships. Uh, I'd like to just shift over to something that's less about um, sales goals and more about talent. I know we're all looking to hire, and I'm really excited to announce that we are launching Drupal Jobs, which will be a professional-grade job board. Um, right now, the community has um, on groups.drupal.org slash jobs um, a service that lets you post jobs, but you can't um, search resumes, you can't um, filter by uh, job type or, um, or level of, of skill. You also, that, you know, what we have um, right now for the community doesn't allow you to target within a geography. So we've built this professional grade Drupal jobs board that will uh, really address all those talent recruitment needs and uh, I'm really excited that you'll be able to post your jobs in there during DrupalCon. And um, we'll be sending you more information on that soon. Uh, so that's one of the ways that we're going to help you with your talent recruitment is then you get into that job board um, early on. And, and we'll be doing a lot of promotion to that job board um, before, during, and after DrupalCon. So uh, you'll definitely see a nice bump from that. If you have a, a booth, um, again, you want to make sure your messaging is really clear. Have a big sign that says, we're hiring. And make sure you have printouts of your job postings. And that way, as you're talking to people, you can hand them out. Um, and really make that top of mind as people come to your booth. Again, you have the attendee profile. Go ahead and comb through that. You're going to see that there's just a ton of talent uh, at DrupalCon. And perhaps some of them would like to work for you. Um, you know, I talked about your booth and having the job postings printed out. I also recommend that you have uh, a business card that highlights your jobs, maybe has the URL to your page that has your job listings. Um, this way, you have a really solid message on your business cards that you're handing out. So as you have employees going around and talking to people, make sure that this is on the, their business card. 
And the other thing too is find ways during the conference to highlight how amazing your company is to work for. Um, we, we definitely know that salary does matter, but people are really making choices and staying at companies because of a company culture. They're looking for a work-life balance. Um, they're looking to have fun. They're looking to learn and be challenged and have really exciting um, job um, opportunities and to grow their career. And so there's a lot of ways that you can have your company shine and, and, um, and highlight what that would it be like if they joined your company. And so uh, as you are going through the week and doing things with your team, maybe you're having team dinners or you're having fun at the booth, uh, take pictures of that and tweet it out and, and highlight that you have jobs and come work for this great company. And of course you can blog about that and really continue to highlight your culture and, and the job opportunities and the, the really great people that you're meeting and remind people to come and meet you at your booth or to set up a meeting with you. So, uh, you know, DrupalCon is just a really targeted way of finding some great talent in, in the community. Other people have goals that are uh, more about brand awareness, getting, uh, being seen as a community leader, um, and also being seen as a thought leader, and there's ways to achieve this as well. Uh, let me just talk about community leadership. So, community leadership really is um, being seen as someone who uh, maybe uh, is, is helping a user group come together and grow. So that could be camps and meetups. Um, it can also be uh, your community leader from a technical perspective. So perhaps you have um, some specialties and you've created modules to give people new features. And so that's a great way of being um, a leader. Other ways is just how you're supporting the community. Um, from a uh, membership, a support or supporter standpoint. So if you're supporting the Drupal Association and helping uh, siphon those funds right towards Drupal.org improvements, go ahead and you know let people know that you're a community leader that way too, um, because we could not be improving the community home without those funds. And so if you have a booth, make sure you're highlighting those kinds of messages. And, um, you know, let them know, like, hey, we have these modules. Uh, you, you know, you want to get traction around those modules. They might need some education about how to use them. And uh, people might want to know, well, what is this supporting partner? What does it mean to be a supporter? And let them know, you know, right there at your booth um, that, you're, you know, we're actually going to give everyone some signs that they can put in their booth. So that way, if anyone asks, um, you can say, yes, I am helping to improve Drupal.org, and this is my contribution. Uh, lots of lots of ways that you can highlight your community leadership. Um, again, uh, we have a, an event called the Community Summit. It's all day Monday, and this is when community leaders come together, structured similar to the Business Summit. Um, but camp organizers, meetup organizers, group organizers, they come together. They talk about, you know, where can we really um, help bring the community together, help strengthen skills in the community, how can we grow the community in a smart way, and how are we doing that today, and how can we do that better? And then they work together, you know, they kind of identify some of the top things, and they come together and they do sprints around that. And uh, you can join this event, it's free, and it is a great way to get together with like minds and, and show um, some leadership there, um, and, and help even guide the sprints and um, come out with some really great things for the community to use all over the globe. Again, the birds of a feather is a great way to show leadership. Even, um, I didn't really touch on thought leadership. Thought leadership might just be um, a matter of, uh, you know, it, well, it could be anything. Uh, it could be uh, technical thought leadership, visionary leadership, uh, leadership on, hey, how this is how we are going about and getting new clients or pushing into the enterprise and um, showing others how to do that as well. So birds of a feather are a great way to show that thought leadership. Um, so you know, don't be shy when we announce the birds of a feather um, calendar is open. Put some topics on there and, and really shine. Really um, be someone who can educate others. Um, of course you can show your community and thought leadership through your digital presence. So. Um, uh, again, through blogs and tweets and, and sharing pictures, you can really highlight some, some things that you're hearing and seeing throughout DrupalCon that you think are really visionary or really impactful for the community to know and, and share those. Um, 
from a technical standpoint, um, we really encourage you uh, to attend or to send your staff to the contribution sprint on Friday. And uh, this is where we're going to be sprinting on Drupal 8, um, as well as other areas such as documentation. There's lots of ways to contribute during these sprints, and you can really be a leader here and help move the needle. Uh, again, contribution sprints are Friday, but if you are someone or your staff is someone who really loves coming together and sprinting, we do have what we call extended sprints. They are the Saturday and Sunday before and after DrupalCon. So those are for the, the real diehards that have lots and lots of energy and can do this for 10 days. Um, lastly, another way that you can highlight yourself as a community leader is attending the Drupal Association board meeting. And that's Wednesday during lunch. It will be on the schedule. And we encourage you to come and hear us report out um, what we're working on uh, the Drupal Association to support the community. We get progress reports and we also have an open Q&A. Uh, and so it's a great time for you to ask questions and better understand what the Drupal Association is doing for the community. And we encourage you to um, share that news with your local community and kind of push that message out further so more people um, can know what we're doing. But you get to be seen in your local community as the, as the one who's really leading and sharing. Um, it also provides free lunch, so you get to avoid all of the long lunch lines. And so uh, that's another reason we think you should attend the Drupal Association board meeting. So we've covered a lot of different um, um, goals that organizations have for sponsoring DrupalCon and shared our pro tips. Uh, and some things I just wanted to um, highlight is just networking. A lot of the, what you're going to do, regardless of your goal, is networking. And uh, sometimes this is, um, you know, it's easier for some than others. And so I just want to cover some things that when you're out and about, um, this is these are some pro tips that you can use, you can share with your team to use. Uh, the one thing is bring plenty of business cards. You can never have too many. Make sure it's got that message on there that you really want to push out. Um, have everyone uh, on your team ready to give that eleva elevator pitch. They really know what that message is, whether it's talent recruitment or sharing um, some expertise that you have in your organization. Um, and, and make sure everyone's just ready to have that at the tip of their tongue and ready to say. Um, one thing uh, also about DrupalCons is it's a family reunion. and We tend to gravitate towards the people we know. And we know a lot of people, but there's still a ton of people out there that are new. We have a really strong base of um, attendees that are relatively new to the community. So make sure you uh, look for them. And uh, I know I actually, I come off as an extrovert, but I'm really an introvert. So uh, sometimes it's hard to go up to someone who is, I, I don't know at all. And I have found that if you have a simple introduction, it works miracles. So just try something like, hi, I haven't met you yet, and my name is Megan. It's amazing. You just start up a conversation. They're usually pretty thankful that you reached out. Um, and so, you know, when you're looking around, try to find those people that are kind of standing by themselves or just you know, with one or two people and, and just reach out and, and, um, and just introduce yourself and also introduce them to other people. Um, they really can start seeing you as a, uh, as a leader in the community that way too. And just keep in mind, you're not there to sell anything. That usually scares people off. Uh, just establish a relationship. Ask them questions. The one question I find to be most helpful is, so why did you come to DrupalCon? And they'll start telling you things, and you might have some follow-up questions, and next thing you know, maybe they're here because they're, you know, they have a company, they really want to understand, you know, should I go this way or that way when I build a website for them? And you might say, oh, you know, we've been finding this and that, and why don't you come to my booth? Like, we could, we could talk some more. I, I think I can help you. Or if you can't, oh, I know someone who can help you. And they'll be really grateful and think of you uh, the next time they might need to work with you. Uh, and, of course, um, you have all those business cards. So when you're talking with someone, you can personalize it. Just, you know, write a little note on there about what you talked about and hand it to them and, and also keep track of the conversations that you're having um, when you receive their business card. That way, you know, you can personalize your follow-up with them. These are just some simple, simple things uh, about networking, and this will be a big part of, of your week. So um, we just wanted to share those tips. And that really concludes the 
the advice that we have on how to uh, maximize your investment, um, just to, to recap, just be really proactive. Start now. I know most of you are on vacation, so when you come back in maybe September, you can really start um, bringing your team together and, and talking about what the goal is, uh, what the message is that you're getting out. Coach everyone, have them come together. Think about the brand that you want to push out. Um, what you know, maybe you can print up some T-shirts really fast. Um, and uh, start your communication through all of your channels. Think about those um, lost leads, your prospective customers, even the uh, existing customers you want to do more business with, and all the ways you can reach out to them. And don't forget the um, all of the attendees. Uh, that you can find on the DrupalCon site, and, and again, just make sure you're you do that in a really sensitive way, um, so they don't feel that they are being spammed. Just really talk to them like a human, you know, not like a salesperson, and you'll you'll get some good reactions, I'm sure. Um, and then again, I can't say it enough. Don't forget to have fun. DrupalCon is certainly a family reunion. It's a lot of fun. It's a time to get together and celebrate all the great things that you've done for and with Drupal. So. Uh, put it on your calendar, and we're going to send you a calendar invite too, but um, the VIP happy hour is Wednesday. And we're really excited to uh, see all of you at DrupalCon Amsterdam, and we want to do everything we can to make sure you have great success. So if you have any questions, please, you can reach out to me. Um, I know you're all working closely with Rachel uh, Friesen, who is our uh, fulfillment coordinator. She can field your questions. Uh, and your sales reps, Johanna and Don, um, are also great resources and can help you. So don't be afraid to reach out, ask questions. Uh, we're happy to give some coaching. Um, and uh, whatever you need for success, we're here for you. So hopefully this uh, webcast on maximizing your investment was helpful. And um, we certainly just look forward to spending some time with you uh, at the end of September in Amsterdam. So thanks for your time, and have a great day. Actually, I'm just going to look at questions. I always forget the questions. Uh, Rachel, were there any questions that I might have missed? There was one question about when um, the Birds of a Feather submission will be open. I'm not sure of the exact date, um, but I will find out and follow up with an email after this. Um, there was a DrupalCon um, newsletter that went out this morning, and those announcements are always covered in, in that. So if you didn't receive an, an e-newsletter this morning, um, I would recommend signing up for that. And um, if you have registered for DrupalCon, you should be getting those unless you opted out. Right. And usually it's announced just a few weeks before DrupalCon. Um, so we will... Um, yeah, we'll definitely be announcing that and on uh, through social media as well. So just keep an eye out for that. If you're not signed up, let me know. We can help you. Uh, make sure you get the news. Um, are there any other questions? Um, if you have questions, you can just type them into the uh, control panel. There's a question about whether we'll send out the slides. And we are recording this and we'll be posting it on our YouTube channel. Uh, so that will be um, posted on the sponsor page, the event kit page of the Amsterdam website. So if you want to direct any of your colleagues uh, to this presentation, you can send them there and they can watch the video.